Uh, first thing I want to ask is this, like, um, I want to say about the um, the Grotesque Infection album, I gotta say that has to be literally one of the best records I've listened to for last, yeah. for last, for like this year, actually. Well, man, thank you very much. It's, it's great to finally, you know, get it on, you know, CD and get it on, uh, on, on an LP because... We just never, you know, had anything but, you know, cassette tapes back then. It was just hard to afford CDs, and, you know, we never got any label interest, so it was always hard for us to come up with um, band cash, you know. So we did the best we could. That's why some of our stuff looks a little like cut and paste at, you know, <laughs> at the copy store. <laughs> but that's that's just part of it, though, that, you know, that we enjoyed, so... Awesome. Also, I want to ask, um, who came up with the name? Um, that was Russ. Russ came up with that name. Um, and uh, Lamont drew it. You know, he, he came up with the artwork. And uh, it was really, uh, it just fit our style, you know. We, just, we were always uh, kind of like, imagining a time like it is right now, you know, when, you know, some crazy germ would uh, infect the human population and cause havoc and death. And we always thought about that, you know what I mean? And so, you know, uh, a lot of it was, uh, you know, our influence with death and leprosy and stuff too, you know, we were just really into that stuff back then, you know what I mean? It was just part of our blood, you know, we loved it just obsessed with grotesque infection, you know, it just, it was just really, it really kicked our ass when we finally figured it out, you know, and one thing about consumption of human feces that probably a lot of people don't know, excuse my fault, um, is uh, that was after we saw a Japanese porno where there was actual consumption of human feces going on. <laughs> <laughs> and we never seen that before, you know. We were just like, "Oh my goodness, man! What the heck? I can't believe these people do that, you know." And uh, we just had to write songs about it. <laughs> it was just one of the craziest things we've ever seen. That's actually, that's actually really awesome. I like how that's actually the whole origin of how that happened. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. It uh. It, was, it blew our minds, and, you know, we were always trying to think of stuff that, you know, stuff to write about, and, you know, just, you know, hit Russ like a like a He's like, dude, can social human feces, dude, we gotta write it, you know, and then he wrote the whole song, you know. <laughs> that was really where we took off, you know, as a band, you know, when we um, wrote those songs and came out with that EP, you know what I mean? It was really... You know, the first one, we had a terrible studio, and uh, <laughs> we recorded live, you know, cheap as we can do with it, <laughs> and uh, it's so crusty, and, so, and, and most of it's great, but, you know, we really wanted to get that good sound, you know, and, and we went to Border City, you know, it was just, it came out great, you know, so it was a, it was a great thing for us. Awesome. <laughs> That's great. Um, how was it like actually recording, like, the first demo, the... Um... What was that? I'm trying to think what that one was called. Actually, the first, how, how was that? How was the recording? Festering set? wounds. Yeah, the festering wounds demo. Sorry, I completely just like blanked out. Um, That's what I'm saying. Fest. Uh, yeah. How was how was that actually recording? How was like the <laughs> festering wounds? Like I said, it was uh, as cheap as possible. It was at the Randall Rubber Room Studios in Buffalo. That was like right behind Home of the Hits on Hurdle Avenue. It was close to Hurdle Avenue. But, um, you know, it was like 300 bucks or 400 bucks for eight hours, you know, to go in there and just do a live recording, you know what I mean? Bring your stuff, you know, had just a, a, a terrible PA, you know, that barely worked. <laughs> and um, as a matter of fact, um, we were having trouble with the microphones when we first started trying to record it. And that's why in the beginning, we didn't hear Joe Barbero, our other, our vocalist, you can hear him say, is that it? 
Are you ready? Is yeah, it on? I actually remember. I actually remember <laughs> hearing to that. Out if this stuff was working. <laughs> <laughs> I actually remember hearing that when I first you know, played. I was like, go ahead, like three times, and it was like there was nothing going on. <laughs> I actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually remember like when I was we playing. Got it working. Oh. So, uh, that might be a pause. No, it's just a little bit laggy. Say that one more time. Oh, no, it's just a little bit laggy for a second. Watch. Maybe look. Around the Oh, I, I can see it now, but uh, am I are you, am I still lagging <laughs> or not? Can you try to repeat that question? Oh no, <laughs> no. I was just saying, am I good now? I think so. I tried moving closer to my Wi-Fi. All right. Actually, yeah. Now, now it's fine. Uh, what I was saying before I was, have to go. I might have to go in the house. All right, that's fine. Uh, what I was saying before was like, um, I I actually could hear that. Um, well, what that he was saying that when the album first started. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, that that place was just. They like just opened. They were like, we were one of their first bands to kind of record there. You know, it was like totally on a whim. And uh, we probably did the best thing. You know, we were probably 17 years old. <laughs> uh, one other question I want to ask is uh, how was it like during the old death metal days? Well, um, you know, we didn't have a car. We take a bus to Buffalo just to go to the sky room to make sure that we saw him. You know? And um, there was no other way to see him. You know, it was either you went to the shore, or, you know, that's it. You know, there was no really pictures and video and all the stuff they have today. So, you know, it was more important, you know, to, to get out there. Because, I mean, if, you know, if, if you didn't get out there and support, you would miss it. You know, you didn't see, you would, I would never saw bands like Shroud, you know, who was great, you know, and Baphomet, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, Malevolent Creation, you know, before they, you know, blossomed to what they did, you know, uh, there was, you know, so many little bands, you know, Cannibal Corpse when they were you know, just starting, you know, like right, right before the day of death, you see them a couple times, you know, before they take off to Florida and make it big. You know, there's just so much going on at the scenes. You just had to be there. You, know, you had to be a part of it. You know, and I'm, I'll never regret it. It was just great, you know. That's awesome, actually. That really is cool because... Um... We used to go to the Rock Cafe. Um, let me think what else I was going to The River Rock Cafe was a great place. Uh, how was that? There experience? was uh, all kinds of bands that would play. Say again? Uh, what, what was that experience like there? Sorry about the delay. That's okay. Uh, I was going to say, um, how you was know, that the experience? Was that, the uh, River Rock Cafe was a, a place where... You, you saw like punk bands, you know, there would be punk bands every weekend up there and they would have death metal shows also. But uh, that's visible. It was right there by the river, right after Grand Island. We would go over and it would be like a short 20 minute, 30 minute bus ride. And we'd be at the River Rock Cafe, you know, and seeing uh, 
all kinds of great bands, you know, all kinds of great bands, you know, like I said, like early Cannibal Corpse. Um, you know, I think we saw Sick of It All there when they were still young. Uh, there was amazing shows there. And it, that place was as big as my jam room. I mean, literally, it was one of the smallest clubs that had, like, the best experience. You know what I mean? And, and I've been trying to figure out a way to bring that, you know what I mean, and, and have some kind of all-age show maybe at some of these um you know, VFW halls or, um, do something. It's like, I was, and then the COVID hit and you're just like, all right, can't do nothing for a while, but you know, hopefully we'll get past all this. And we'll be able to have more shows, um, coming up where we can interact with, you know, younger people, because I mean, if they had an, an, some kind of access to live experience, it's more than looking at the video screens all the time i mean i think that it would enhance their life you know i, I, I want to be an influence to the other generation you know that you can you can always um pursue your dreams no matter what that's awesome i, I that is really good to hear actually it really is because um I, like I always say to myself, too, like, I love live experience shows way better than, like, just looking at a computer screen, because the live shows are more, it's like, you're actually seeing the band perform live in front of in front of you, because, like, you can always just look at something on a computer all the time. Yeah, it's, it, to feel the music, and to, to see the experience in person is different because um you know heavy music is all about emotion feel and when you're there and you're you know you, you've been pissed off all week and you just let out that anger and you scream and you just like have had enough of this damn shit and it makes you feel better it makes you feel better you, you, you leave that experience, you leave that show, getting your ears blasted off, feel like a million dollars. <laughs> and it's you the, know, it's like yeah, a, it's the best experience. It's almost like you, you get focused, you know. It's basically like the best experience. That's right. Have. That's right. So, you know, we'd love to do a grotesque infection reunion. You know, we'd love to play a couple shows up in, in New York, you know, once this crap is over, you know, Russ is talking about doing it. And, you know, uh, we just gotta, gotta make it happen. You know, after all the attention we've gotten during COVID, you know, with the, with the grotesque infection vinyl coming out and, uh, you know, the CDs from, uh, you know, from CDN records and head split records it's been so supportive. You know, I mean, Cam Schwartz and you and, you know, all, all these people are just, you're in the basement and you're holding up the scene for all of us still, man. And, you know, thank you so much. That's true. Actually, that is, that's true, actually, because, like, um, like, like I, I just love how like all these old demos are basically coming back again. Actually, from like bands that I, I actually haven't heard, or probably some people haven't heard in like such a long time, and now it's coming back to the light again. Actually, like it's like it's a brand new release, but it basically isn't. It's like one of those old classic gems that are just finally coming back. Yes, it's it's great, you know, because uh, at time in my life meant a lot to me you know and it, it was hard to it was hard to move away from new york you know and there was a lot of things that happened that caused that to happen and um i had to uh i had to relocate you know and uh, um if if we could have kept it together i know we would have been we would still be there today um, one other thing I actually do now, I actually want to talk about this. Actually, I want to talk about like the uh, the recording process of like the the demos. Like, like basically, like um, when with that going on, actually, when you were recording them, like uh, how, how were the sessions like for like both of them? Like, how long did it take like to record it, and 
how many takes to like um did it take to record like each song and basically yeah basically just like how long was the process of both of the demos. Well, that's funny. Uh, you should ask that. Uh, it was just completely live. Like we had practice on Saturday or Friday, and then we went and recorded on the next day. You know, it was uh, we did everything in one or two takes, and we were in and out of there. You know, with the quickness, and you could tell because you can hear, you know, the total raw and improv improvisation of the first demo. You know, the second one we put a lot of thought into. You know, we hired an artist who was Art Gore. You know, I don't know what happened to the guy. He was an amazing artist. I haven't been able to get in touch with him for years. But amazing artwork, you know. <clears throat> um, born the CD that is Grotesque Infection, Consumption of Human Feces. And that one, we really, you know, when we were in the studio, everybody was ready to go we we really tried hard to, to get that thing in and it was probably you know one or two takes per song but we did a good job with it and you know it was uh it was all individual uh we recorded the uh drums first and those guys played behind some glass uh and then some booths you know and then uh we re-recorded the guitars and bass after that um, I think it was three days, I want to say. Did the drums the first day, and then the guitars the second day, and then the vocals and the mastering the final day. Um, you know, and, 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 you know, back then, I think it was like 800 bucks. You know, probably today it'd be a couple thousand dollars to have a three-day session with, uh, you know, um, 18 to 20 hours, you know, of recording, you know, um, cost a little more nowadays, but we really enjoyed it and made it happen with what we had. And, um, I, I think it was successful. Uh, it, it definitely was successful. It's like one of the greatest demos I've ever heard. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> you know, I think Constriction of Human Feast is a song. I think that's one of the heaviest songs ever recorded <laughs> because of the bass, you know, it's just it's so friggin' heavy. <laughs> and I just love it to death. Oh, I could say it's one thing actually. I can't even tell you how many times I've listened to that one C D actually for like the past like since last year to this year. I can't even tell you how many times I've just was like, you know what, I need to listen to this again. I have to. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, you're you know, very uh, welcome. I was actually, I was, I was actually playing a little monstrous offspring, trying to get psyched up before <laughs> you, uh, <laughs> awesome. you uh, video called me. <laughs> Cause, um, you know, uh, let me think. Oh, good. I, actually, I got. I want to do say something. Actually, it, it's because of. Um, to be honest, it's actually because of. Um, uh, Cannibal Cam. Actually, he's the one who actually introduced me to you guys. I know he's. Uh, he was great. He used to come across the border from Canada. We 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 had little shows in Niagara Falls that I would set up. You know, I. And I go to, I just show, I was like 18. I was showing up at bars going, hey, uh, good grotesque infection play here. <laughs> you know, and there's like five people in the little tiny bar, like the cocktail zone, this place, you know, this tiny little place. We were like, yeah, set up in the back. Destroy the place. <laughs> <laughs> and we would, you know, we would, we would pack the place full of 18, 19, 20 year olds. Everybody's in there having a good time. The bar owner's like, Wow. <laughs> and uh, it was the heaviest thing in Niagara Falls. And, uh, you know, it was really good for about three or four years. I'll tell you. And we played uh, this other place called Cheers. And the owner was this uh, this old man, you know, and he was just like, you know, I don't care what you do. Just give me my 500 bucks or whatever you wanted to use the club, you know. We keep all the door money. We pay him out of that. He would pay he was having like the greatest time of his life, you know, with grotesque infection, cyst, purity, 
uh, you know, infestation, you know, another Niagara Falls. And we all would play at these little tiny dive bars. And Camel Cam, here he is, showing up at every one of them. <laughs> like, we know that guy. We know that guy. What's start talking to him. He's like, you know, man, I mean, that guy's, he's a fan for life. He's amazing, you know, I love that guy. Oh, no, he, he's absolutely fantastic. Like, me and him are very good friends, actually. I've been talking with him for, like, almost half a whole year right now, and he's a really nice guy. It's my goal for Mafia to come play in Canada. Maybe we'll do a grotesque little friggin' thing or something, you know? It'd be so great. <laughs> <laughs> now that, that would be awesome. Hopefully see. anthropic. Yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think it's going to take another year <laughs> before we can go play in Canada, but I'm really looking forward to the possibility of, of, of being outside the country again. Because uh, I think about that show in Canada we did, you know, um, at Uncle Sam's, and that was one of the greatest shows we've ever done as far as the, you know, entertainment value and. I mean, there was a adult entertainment club right next door to that place. Uh, it was it was a absolutely fantastic night, and um, that night we really killed it. That's awesome, actually. That no, that's sweet. Because um, one thing I want to ask is like um, during the old like uh, death metal days, like um, what do you do you think like um a lot of bands and shows have like um the atmosphere has like still been the same. Or has it changed? Well, time changes all, you know. Uh, uh, I mean, slam dance and mosh pits used to be pretty much in commonplace, you know, back then. But nowadays, people like to hang back and watch more. Uh, they don't really like to get pushed around or like to get into the music that way. Some people do, but there's a lot of people that, you know, uh, they, they'd rather just watch the band than actually get into the pit when I would love to get in the pit. But I got some bad knees, got some bad ankles, and I had enough hard time, you know, so I don't, I don't like to do that as much, but I, I tell you, if I go see Campbell Corpse and uh, they then they play uh, Scourge Byron, you know, I pretty much can't control myself. I have to get so, yeah. <laughs> or oh, you know, I mean, something like uh, it, it's got some slamming riffs. It's kind of hard for me to back back down. I still try to get in the pit. <laughs> Oh, of course. Like, I, I love going in the pit, too. Yeah. Like, I feel, I feel like so when it comes to, like, moshing, I feel like that's, like, the best experience because, like, you're really getting, like, more of the rush into the music as well. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, there's nothing better. Nothing better than crowd riding, you know, and everybody passing you around and they don't drop you. <laughs> I mean, that, that's a great freaking feeling, man, you know? And, and uh, you know, I think we all just need to get back to live shows. Oh, yeah. I think we all need it. It's in our blood. It's in our soul. We got to get out there and see heavy music. Like, like I said, it's a feel thing. And you feel, you know, that heavy bass and bass drums and uh you know the heavy guitars and it just it hooks you and it brings you in oh it really does because um <clears throat> i got i want to say one thing if you guys ever do like a grotesque infection on my reunion show uh you should head you should head to um saint vitus bar in brooklyn yeah that would be uh amazing <laughs> <laughs> you know uh that Anthropic, I think they played there last year. Um, they might have some contact with those people. Do you know the owners over that at, at that place? Um, 
Personally, no. I I but I go there like all the time for like all my shows when I want to go see something all the time. Mm-hmm. Great. Well, if we can get a contact and for to send a promo pack to you or something, you know, it'd be great. You know, send a grotesque thing over, and you know, maybe it's worth it. I mean, Russ Russ wants to do it. I know I want to do it. We just gotta find a guitar player. So, gotta find a guitar player. Uh, ready to go. Uh, have you been like looking for anyone lately, or not right now at the moment due to COVID? Um, Ross hasn't been able to travel. He was supposed to come down, and we were supposed to play in my studio here in Charlotte. Um, and we we're gonna do some grotesque stuff and teach guitar player who plays with me now some of our stuff, you know, so we could possibly. Do an anthropic, grotesque, mafia, you know, show. That would be like a little reunion show, you know. So we we tried to get one of our original guitar players, Eric Wilhelm. We tried to get him to uh, you know get his guitar going again, but I think that um, he just doesn't have time. So we're gonna find him, have to find another guy. All I can say is I wish you guys nothing but the best of luck on that. <laughs> You'll be the first to know. <laughs> awesome. Because, <laughs> um... Yeah, man. Also, like, what, like uh, have you ever actually, like, um... Since, like, I know you reside in uh, Buffalo, New York, like, back in the, uh, like, early uh, 90s and, like, during, like, the really big times of the uh, old school death metal days like um what would be like some of the shows that you guys actually went to see during the time like when the bands were basically at their like highest like their peak well um at the uh Lackawanna town ballroom we went and saw sepultura that was on the arise tour and uh they were absolutely incredible that night. You know, I mean, they they absolutely blew my mind. And but see, and uh, we met Max Cavalera before the show. He was walking through the parking lot, saying what's up to everybody. And we were hanging out, drinking at the back of my car. And he comes around the corner. Hey, what are you guys, doing? you know, it's Max Cavalera. We're like, what's up, man? Can't wait to see you guys. You know, you're so stoked and pumped, stoked and pumped, and then pumped up and. And uh, I think uh, Sacred Rite played that night, too, with them. And uh, they were great. So Sepultura, Sacred Rite. Um, that was a great show. And then, and then the time that Sepultura played before that was with Obituary at the, at the Sky Room mm-hmm. and during the Beneath the Remains tour. And I saw a guy get his face destroyed that night and it, <laughs> during Obituary. It was like I got in the pit and just got completely moshed up and they had to drag him out of there. You know, they had to carry him out like on a stretcher style. You know what I mean? It was just, wow, this is a crazy show, you know, and it was just packed in there. And uh, obituary blew mind that night. They were on the slowly we rot tour and uh, you know, Trout, the guitar player, you know, just the most wicked looking guy, you know, and he was up there just, just going, just, just giving it to us, man. We were just like blown away by them, you know. John Tardy just at his finest, and uh, and that night stuff turned kicked my ass, man. It was, uh, it was that was a great show. Probably one of the first times I saw a Cannibal Corpse. It was Cannibal Corpse and Baphomet. And uh, it was Shroud, you know, and this was at the Sky Room, too. And that was, like, one of the first times I saw a Cannibal Corpse, and that was just, like, wow, man, a fan of life, you know what I mean? And uh, I'm still friends with them guys today, man. I love them guys. They're, uh, they are the, the, the long-term warriors, man, you know. I got, what, 15 records out now. 16 records out now i don't even know i lost count cannibal corpse you know they a little fast. apparently actually i heard that the cannibal is making a new album this year yeah i know i don't know what number it is i gotta go count them. 
<laughs> I feel like a dick. <sighs> like, um, to be honest, actually, my favorite era of Cannibal. But uh, another great show. Mm-hmm. Say it again. Oh, sorry. Now, uh, but, uh, before you continue, which one was your favorite? I was gonna say, like, my favorite era of Cannibal Corpse would have to be um, the old, like, Chris Barnes era because I feel like that's when the band was like most alive, and I really enjoy more of those songs better than what they have like their new material today. Um, I semi agree with you. I still love Corpse Grinder, um, but yeah, that old material. I mean, you know, when Butcher at Birth came out, Hammer Smash Face. I mean, that's just it's just an absolute classic, man. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. Like, I, the Hammer Smash Face is one of those songs that I never get tired of. Like, that's my favorite song of all time from the band. Absolutely. You know, and uh, Alex Webster, you know, he's a he's a cornerstone of the scene. You know, that guy supports so many great bands, you know, and... and you know, he, he's he's like a god, man. That guy is a, an absolute death metal god. Oh yeah, no, really. Yeah. I this is the interviews I've seen with uh, him being like like interviewed. I gotta say, he he knows a lot about what what goes on during the, the old during the old times and what was like you know back then and right now. Absolutely, man. Um, another great show. That I saw at the Sky Room was Agnostic Front, Sick of It All, Biohazard, all on the same night. And it was like Slapshot played too, which another was a Buffalo Hardcore, but they had to be one of the best hardcore shows of all time. I'm telling you what. Place was jam packed. It was a great show. Now, that had to be like hey, I, like that. Now that had to be like crazy. Actually, how many how many people were at that show? Oh, it was a capacity. I mean, I think the Skyrim held. I think the maximum was two thousand or twenty five hundred. I mean, they were they were way over capacity. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, there was people standing room only, pretty much everywhere. Um. Well, back then, I mean, I was 17 years old, so I didn't care what was going on except for this band, you know what I mean? And I just couldn't believe the scene, you know, that was there, you know. And I, I got in the bus every show from Niagara Falls, an hour on the bus to get there. <clears throat> Me and Russ Martin, no matter what. Awesome. Um, during, like, um, like, during the time, like, when... um back to then like when uh grotesque infection was like brand new and like everything was going on like um how many toys have you guys done around actually how many like shows have you played like with like all those well-known bands back then we did probably five or six shows um we never played with cannibal corpse as grotesque infection or did we we did Skyrim one time. That's from this yard. I think we did. Actually, played with uh, Cannibal Corpse one time. And I think we opened the show. And I believe the other band that played uh, Rochester. You know, there was no other band that played it came to Buffalo, you know, we got on the show. Um, played with Acacia a few times, which was so great, you know, John's the greatest guy, you know, and uh, we played with Mortician one time, and we played with Human Remains a few times. That was great. And Demonesty, you know, Demonesty is our beat. City, and at the uh, in New Jersey, we had a show in New Jersey, and uh, those guys were great too. Another band was Ritual Torment. We played with them a bunch. 
trying to think of other big bands you played with. There really wasn't a whole lot. Just to take that particular time, you know, was just a period of transition for a lot of bands. And we're just insane, though. They weren't really looking at the flow there. It got played, just signed Campbell. Um, what you call it, near Bass and Baphomet. It was too bad. I, you know, so it was like a common. There was one that had um, another band that got dolls, you know, I, that too. I mean, you know, like a lot. But they got signed, so there was like three bands that already signed out of Buffalo that were huge and were getting bigger and bigger. So there wasn't a lot of interest in signing another band out of Buffalo, is the way I feel, you know, so we didn't get as much attention as we wanted. Relapse Records, you know, they really liked us. The thing with them is, is they didn't want to take the chance to sign us. So, they sent us a letter back saying that, you know, thank you very much. Your material's great. We love it. But it's not really what we're looking for right now. And it was like, you know, that kind of killed us, you know, because we, we were really, we really thought relaxed going to pick us up. You know, we really thought that. And um, when we turned down by relapse and they said it was not what they were looking for, we kind of like went into, you know, what the hell are people looking for? You know what I mean? <laughs> It's got friggin' heavy bass, friggin' heavy vocals. Um, I think it has a unique style to it, or it didn't sound like uh, anybody else, really. It was super heavy, and, and, you know, it was disappointing that we couldn't get a deal just to get distribution of some, you know, of just the consumption, so, you know, we just wanted distribution. We didn't even want any money. You know, we just wanted the chance to get out our shows. And, you know, we just, we, we fought them for another year, you know, after that happened. And a lot of the clubs started close. You know, Scrapyard closed. The Sky Room was closed. Um, the River Rock closed. There was, um, Nowhere to play except the Icon. The Icon had a few shows. That's a big room. And they wanted, the club wanted money to play there. So it was kind of tough. You know, both Thor played there and they packed the place. Cable Corps played there. They packed, they packed the place. So my, we, we played with them, but that was with my other band. That was Organism. Played with Cannibal Corps at the Icon. And that was a great show. But, um, oh, you know, there really was, we were not a play, so play we got these old, like, the Wanda Theater, we played with there. That was a huge, you know, 2,000 people in it, you know, and get 200 people in it. place is kind of empty, you know, still. <laughs> so, that place was expensive. I had a death metal fest in Tonawanda at a theater, and, uh, that had, Ripping Corpse and Mortician and Incantation and Gorophobia and Us and I mean it was a it was a metal fest. I mean we had you know four hundred people there, but the same night Helmet played in downtown Buffalo. So a lot of people went to go see Helmet. And we were like, God almighty. So I ended up losing money on that show. I probably lost, you know, nine hundred dollars to club, you know, after I paid all the back. And, you know, we still had, I had to pay the club. And so that killed me because I, I just lost $1,000 on a show. But I tried to um, set up smaller shows. And it just seemed kind of faded away a little bit, you know. Around 1993, 94, it just started to, there's a lot of clubs that just were, were done, you know. I see, like, um. Also, one other thing I wanted to um, actually ask too, like during the time, like when you, like when both of those demos were still out, like did you guys ever think about making like a full length album, or that never came to uh, to thought actually? Um, we wanted to do it all. You know, we it was an EP, and we were working, and we actually have. 
you know, like four more songs that were written after consumption that we played at the Uncle Sam live show that um, a couple of them are on that live show that, you know, are not released. They're just, that's the only place we ever played them is the Uncle Sam's, you know, and we'll play a couple other places. But. Um, and we've tried to, you know, work towards that to get, you know, um, a live, a, not a live deal, but a, a record deal where we didn't have to pay again to produce it ourselves, you know, because we just paid to produce the consumption EP, which is we're trying to use a stepping stone to relapse helping us or somebody else helping us. Because, I mean, we're just poor kids from Niagara Falls, you know what I mean? We, we didn't have any money, you know, and none of us grew up um, with any kind of silver spoons, I'll tell you that, you know. Um, and um, if there's no money, there's no there's no album, man. you know, there's no recording, production, you know, distribution, artwork, you know, there's, there's a lot that goes into it that is costly for a band, you know, that's why I charge, you know, for their artistic uh, LP or album and you know, because it takes a lot of effort to put it out, you know, so, you know, if it's not half-assed, then it's worth paying for. Yeah, I can understand, I can really not understand how, why that, how that would actually be, because when it comes to, like, like, a band trying to, like, get, the, like, a new album out or record something, it does take a lot of money for it, so I can see why, like, um, why everything would cost so much, at the, really. Yes, sir. Um, and back then, in 1992, 93, 94, you know, I mean, really you only made $400 a week, you know what I mean, or $300 a week, you know. So uh, when someone said, you know, a thousand bucks for a studio, you know, it's about that time we were trying to get out on our own and paying rent at places for the first time, paying bills. You know, and all that piles up. We even, you know, the band actually rented a house, you know, and we all pitched in on the bills and we had a place to practice and we'd have huge parties and try to charge money for keg parties and stuff <laughs> to make money for the band to, to do stuff like recording and everything. But it just, it takes a lot. Oh, you got to have help, really. Um, big dollars. Uh, let me think. What else I was gonna say, like, um, do do you still have like um, any old like CDs or anything for like of like albums or from like any bands that you still have today, like any like first presses or anything like that? Absolutely, absolutely. I have um, uh, I I have Filthy Christians on um on vinyl. Original earache. I have many of the first pressing of the Iron Maiden vinyls. Um, um, yeah, I was a huge Iron Maiden fan, you know, and uh, I still love them. I have uh, the first Killers came out. Peace of Mind. Number of the Beast, I have all those on vinyl. And uh, what else do I have on vinyl? You know, I have the uh, the first Bolt Thrower cassette, their first their first album. Um, I got a ton of stuff still, Steve, Stephen. I got, I got a ton of stuff. That's awesome. Stephen? Stephen or Stephen? Uh, Stephen. Yeah, I I, uh, I still have all the demos from back in the day, just like you, you guys got. You guys put on face, you, know, you put on your Facebook pages. I I, I still have, have all of them. Also, um, 
I would have stacked them up if I would have known. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I, tried, I, I get the first bath main demo. I got um, Shroud demo. Um, you know, that was, yeah, you know, it, it was a great time. You know, it was just a great time. You know, you just appreciated everything, you know, that you, you get from these concerts, you know, you get these little demos and you go back home after you got this treat, you know, you just, you just saw this band and you got to listen to their stuff and <sighs> that was a good time. Awesome. Uh, what I was going to say was like, um, uh, I actually, I do have something for you. Actually, I do have something to tell you actually. Um, I want to tell you, like, um, if you're if you're, like, you're still interested in like listening to a lot of old like uh, death metal demos, like from like the early days. Actually, there's, there's a channel on YouTube who I'm actually very good friends with. Um, his name is uh, Ken, and he goes by Ken's Death Metal Crypt on YouTube. Uh, you should check it out. He uploads a lot of demos, like of old school death metal bands, like bands you probably like you know haven't been like around since like well the early '90s, and the demos haven't been heard for a while. So. Uh, you should check out that. You should check out his channel. He has like lots of demos, and he also does like interviews with bands too, as well. So you you should give it a check. Actually, it's really cool. And that is Ken's death metal. Let me clip. see here. One second. Go right ahead. Yeah, I was gonna put a voice. Ken's death metal. Crypt. Crips. Got it now. <laughs> awesome. Uh, he, he also has... I'll a, check that uh, out. Awesome. Please do, actually, because that... I, I, like I said, I'm good friends with the guy. I, um, I, I, I support his channel fully, and he has so many great demos and interviews, so you should check it out as well. And also, um, he has his own band as well called Unnatural, which um, you should really check them out. Unnatural has like a lot of good demos and everything, so... You should give that a shout out um, no, too, as well. Awesome. Music to my ears, brother. Awesome. <laughs> Is there any shows in Canada going on? Well, Is actually, there any shows in Canada? Oh, actually, I, I live in here in, in New York in the U.S., so I don't really know exactly. Oh, I thought you were in Canada. Oh, uh, no. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. Uh, I, I live here in the United States in New York. I don't know why I thought that. Yeah, that's okay. It's all oh, good. Oh, awesome, brother. Like, I, I wish there were shows going on right here in, uh, <laughs> in New York, actually, to be honest with you. And I hope Canada as well have, have shows again as well, too, for them. But, like, uh, I, I, nothing's really going on here in, in New York with any shows or anything. Like, it's it's been very quiet like that. And I'm just like, eh, I wish I can go back to seeing something right now. Is Lamora still open? Um... To be honest, I uh, I don't really know exactly. To be honest with you, I never heard anything about that. No. Yeah. <clears throat> I I've been to Lemoore's a couple times, see shows, and uh, well, and I just hope that we can all get together. You know, New York City will come. Oh, like really? Like I would love to see you guys down in New York City, especially with like. Uh, uh, like like I said before, like with grotesque infection, like reunion show, and also to see Mafia, I would love to actually see that all live. Actually, very soon, as I as like he once everything is all finished with, you know, I would love to see that live. Well, we're gonna work towards it. That's we'll sweet. be happy to come. Oh, of course. Like um, also like what would you like? I want to say this. Like what what would you say would be like um. Throughout the time, like, what would you say is one of the best shows that you ever played, actually? Like, we would say, like, this is the show that topped the rest. Like, what would you say, like, was that exact show? Mm. Like it? Oh wow, that that's oh my god, the lineup is amazing. Dude, that was one of the greatest shows. Yeah. 
Gorephobia was amazing, dude. That was like one of the last times they, they played in Buffalo, too. Oh, that is awesome. I love the lineup. And Incantation, Gorephobia, and, and you guys, Grotesque Infection. That that's that has to be amazing. Yes. Dude, that was with Craig. I think that was like right after, right after right, their, uh, their CD came out, too, man. That was, man. That was a great, great night. So that's probably one of the greatest ones. You know, I would say, I would say the Cannibal Corp show at the Scrapyard was one of the greatest, I think. But um, if I'm not mistaken, I think we only played like 15 minutes. It's like, you know, they were like, get up and get off. And, you know, <laughs> I think we were, we were. We were setting up and ripping down before we even knew what happened. You know, it's like we were like, all right, I'm ready to go. It's like, blah, 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 play like, you know, four or five songs. All right, that's it. You know, so I would say that was one of the greatest, but it was very rushed. You know, you know the opening band, you know, they always get kind of get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so. Um, let me think about what I was gonna say. Like, actually, now I want to ask, like, well, like d during like the, the time of dog touring and traveling, uh, what would you say was like one of the most craziest moments that happened on like a tour? Like one of the things that would be like, oh crap, that was insane. Like when like you, it was like completely unexpected. Well, um, I was with another band called Me Method Fifty One, and um. We played a show with Nocturnus in uh, Tampa, Florida. And um, I didn't know they were playing. I just knew we were playing, you know what I mean? But I didn't know Nocturnus was playing, you know? So it was like we show up to play, and it was like, oh, Nocturnus is, is headlining. And we were just like, wow, really? You know, and uh, I've never seen Nocturnus, you know what I mean? And they were big, you know, in the early 90s, you know what I mean? And, and uh, this was... Uh, the year 2000 when they played and uh to be honest with you i think we were better than them that night <laughs> <laughs> so they really surprised me because i mean i was really like i was pumped up to see nocturnus and when they and when they actually played it was a little disappointing um a crazy time on tour was probably the same tour when we did four shows in Texas and um, we actually got to stay at this girl's house after the shows and uh, we partied like crazy um, and uh, we ate all our spaghetti <laughs> <laughs> We had to fix our van too, so that sucked. But um, yeah, I haven't had my, too many real crazy times, but that was that was a crazy time. But that was a that's a good that, that was that's actually a really funny story actually because um. One other thing I wanted to ask was like, um, it, actually, yeah, now I want to ask this. Actually, this is like a random question. Um, it's um, if basically if you were still like back in the day, um, and you won and you were going on tour, um, what 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 would be like the tour that you always wanted to go to? Like, what bands would you say like these are the bands I want to actually tour with? And like, what would it be like the ultimate dream tour if you could if you actually can go back and um. Uh, like back in the early days and to that time. What a question. Um, I would have to say Slayer, Cannibal Corpse, and Grotesque Infection in front of big crowds. <laughs> <laughs> Back then, Slayer didn't play that many shows, you know, on the East Coast. So it was a real treat, you know, to see Slayer. I mean, they played New York City, but then they'd be out of there, you know, they wouldn't play anywhere else, you know what I mean? But um, when they finally went on that Clash of the Titans tour, you know, when it was Slayer, Megadeth, Anthrax, and Alice in Chains, you know, that was when they started playing a little more, you know on the east coast you know but that 
that would be the ultimate, the ultimate show back then because, you know, people would come from all over to see Slayer. And they come from all over to see Cannibal Corpse. And so they would be there to see us, too, you know. And we would have catapulted us right into the infinity. <laughs> <laughs> Also, like, um, I, I want to also ask this. Um, how many times actually have you seen um, um, Cannibal actually perform live? Oh. I've seen him in Buffalo. Oh, I've seen him in Charlotte. I've seen him in Tampa. I've seen him in Atlanta. I've seen him. Let's see, I've seen him in Michigan. Michigan Death Fest. Um, gotta be 25 times at least. Oh, wow. That, that's really, that's a great, that's a great streak of times. Yeah. I'll tell you. And I would show up at Cannibal Corp show in Charlotte, North Carolina, you know, and Alex Webster never knew I was coming. Like when I first moved here, you know, when I first moved out of Buffalo, I showed up and I was like, and he was just, he was like, is that Justin from Buffalo? <laughs> I was like following him around for a while. You know, I saw him in Tampa. Like, he's like, what are you doing here? <laughs> in Atlanta, in Rochester, you know, so he started putting me on the guest list, you know, every time they play Charlotte, I'd be on the guest list. And, uh, I'd pay to go in still, you know, and I, I was on the guest list. You know, my, I'd see Alex, he'd be like, hey, man, you're on the guest list. Did you get Did you get in? You know, I was like, I just paid to come in. I didn't know I was on the guest list. He's like, man, I put you on the guest list every time. And I'm like, oh, well, I had no idea. Thank you so much, you know. <laughs> but uh, those guys are great. They are uh, true professionals. Oh, yeah. Like I, I, I actually had a chance to actually luckily to see them like three times actually, but like before any of this happened actually, he was I was able to actually see them back in um, in New actually I saw them like in New York like well three times actually I saw them on uh this other tour I went to back in 2016 I saw them with a uh, Cryptopsy and Obituary and Abysmal Dawn I went to see them on that show, and, and yes that that actually had to be like the best Cannibal Corp show I've ever experience because when I, I that was like the first time ever i saw cryptopsy or obituary and that just blew me away actually though it really was a good show and um <clears throat> oh yeah and also like the second time was actually at the uh summer slaughter tour of 2016 they basically headlined that at the actual show because and that was like the second time i went to see actually cannibal corpse there and the third time was it was just um back um two years ago in 2019 when I saw them on the uh, Decibel Magazine tour with uh, Morbid Angel and Immolation and um, Necrod and Blood Incantation. So that was like the other show I went to see. And I hated it. I missed that show and I hated it. Man. I, wanted, I wanted to see them that, that, that night. I was, uh, I was out of town that night when they came through. Was, but, uh, yeah, I mean, Charlotte, you know... Um, there's been a lot of bands for lately, but a while back, you know, before the COVID, uh, Nile and Terrorizer, um, and that was amazing. That was about, I'd say, November of 2019 is when they played. Oh, nice! Like, um, um have you ever seen like, um, have you ever seen the band Malignancy play live? No, I haven't. Oh, I haven't. Oh, actually, because the, the, the um, you know, really? oh, you know, malignancy, right? Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Now I was gonna say, you, uh, you know about the band Malignancy, right? I mean, I've heard of them. I haven't heard them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna listen to them though. Oh, they they they're like one of those old like uh, '90s death metal bands, actually. Like. If you ever saw them live, they they were absolutely outstanding, actually, because they 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 sound exactly like the album that was recorded. Like that's how amazing it was. Like they, 
like they just blew me away. Actually, I saw them at St. Vitus just um, and, and back in 2019, it was a great show. Hell yeah! One of the greatest shows I've seen lately is King Diamond in mm-hmm. Las Vegas. Oh, that had 2017. I went. Yeah, I went. To, I'm, going, I'm going again this year to go see Merciful Fate Ooh. in Danzig and friggin' Emperor. Ooh. Immolation. Ooh, okay. And Repulsion. Ooh. Are all playing in Las Vegas. I'm going. And uh, I went in 2017, and I saw um, King Diamond, Dora, Carcass. Um, it was amazing, you know, amazing show. And uh, King Diamond was absolutely incredible to go see him. And I just can't wait to see Merciful Fate now. You know, it's the only show they're playing in the U.S., that has to be a. I wish I could go see that because I'm a huge Merciful Fate so, fan. I wish I can. I wish I had a chance to see that. <laughs> yeah. And that that's gonna make um, that's gonna be get really your plane good. tickets, man. Like uh, that, that I I I need, I need to get down there. <laughs> yeah, I'll send you the flyer. I'll message it to you. Oh, please do. Actually, I I think I'll. You know, yeah, I think it's I'll. It's at do Mandalay. Oh, at the Mandalay Bay. It's at Mandalay Bay. Ooh, nice. <laughs> uh, let me think what else. That was good. So, uh, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, sorry, I was just trying to think what else I wanted to say. Oh, that's oh, that's cool. That's signed by King. That is that is really cool, actually. Like I can, like how many signatures are on that? <clears throat> there's a uh, there's King, and then there's and this one and that one. I can't I can't read that one. I can't read that one. But yeah, there's five signatures on it on the whole band. Oh, that's awesome, actually. Like, um, this is this is from. Uh, hell yeah! I gotta get this framed before it gets destroyed. <laughs> oh yeah, because that now that that's something very valuable and rare to had to have. Yeah, man. It has to go in my metal shrine. Like uh, how many like how many signatures actually do you have of like bands actually? Um, that's that's about it. Not many. I've not, I've never been a signature guy. You know, they were sitting at a table signing posters, and I happened to get in line, and I was like, yeah, you know. That that must have been awesome. <laughs> I was like, I'm a signed poster. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I, I'm... I've never been, like, someone to go, hey, can I have your autograph? Kind of thing. I don't know why. Uh, let me think. I was, was going to say, like, um, to be honest, actually, I, ha- I, I have never seen uh, King Diamond ever live, actually, to be honest with you. I never had a chance to. Oh, man. What a show. What a show. I got some video from Vegas show on my phone it has like a stage set and everything and um i'll try to i'll try to send it to you just to look at it oh yeah i'd like to see exactly how that was absolutely it's great oh yeah like i, I always like i i know by i like um that um slayer actually was having a farewell tour actually for, for them so to be honest, I never actually saw them live as at all. I actually, I never had a chance to see them live at all. Slayer, they had, had the wall tour. You know, they they came through Charlotte twice, and uh, um, a bunch of my buddies came down from Buffalo. You know, Russ came down, and Matt came down, and my other friend Rich came down. 
And we had, um, this was, uh, this was, this was right before I went to Vegas. <laughs> this was a couple months before that in 2017. We all went and saw Slayer and then we all went to the beach together and had a great weekend. And that, that had to be, now that had to be like a really awesome time because, uh, like, I want. I always wanted to actually see like Slayer live because I've always like um, seen like live footage about them, and I still haven't to this day. And I just, I just want to have like that one experience to say, hey, I actually had a chance to see them live before they ever just like completely no, don't do shows that anymore. I'm sure they'll run out of money at some point and they'll have to go on tour again. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so, so I can get a chance to actually you know, get a chance to see them. Those guys are pretty rich. Yeah, those guys are, are pretty successful. Oh yeah. And got uh, a lot a lot going on, but I think that they'll be back in a couple of years. I hope actually for another tour. I really hope, actually, I want to have a chance to see them live again. Like, ever in my life, I really want to have a chance to see them live. Well, hopefully by the summer, New York City will open up and some shows will come because New York City is the mecca for heavy metal and heavy death metal. Oh, yes, we definitely and are. I'm ready to... I'm, I'm ready for a trip. To, I'm ready for a trip to the city. Oh yeah, no, if I'm ever around the city, I would like to see if you. I would like to see you there if you ever come around. Be happy to. I'm to get cold. Chill. <laughs> But I actually can't say that again. Actually, I kind of, I kind of just like lagged a little bit. Yeah. Oh no! What I was gonna say was, like, can you say that again? Actually, the the camera a little bit lagged. Um, I didn't say anything. I was listening. <clears throat> Oh, okay. I just wanted to just wanted to see it because uh, it was like a little bit cutting off for a second. Yeah, gotcha, brother. All right. Actually, you know, I, I think I'm actually gonna like I, I'm gonna have to actually get going now, so I'm gonna just gonna end it off right here, right? All right. Thank you so much, Stefan. I appreciate your interest and your support, and um, all things grotesque infection, and um, I can't wait to. Uh, Maybe play for you in the future, brother. Oh, of course, absolutely. Thank and thank you. I want to say thank you so much for doing this. I absolutely, really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. Thank you just so much. You're welcome. Have a great day, brother. Thank you. You too. Subscribe.